Oh fuck! Let me move my computer. I'm way, I'm way over there. Yo, what's happening? Um, we doing the show tonight? We didn't do the one last night. We in the midst of March Madness, and everybody's losing a bunch of fucking money. So let's get right to the hotline, bro. Whatever y'all want to talk about. Well, I get, that guy called four times before I started the show. Randy, Jesus Lord. Sprite quarters. Hey, Devin. First of all, happy all being our day 202. What's up? Um, Thank you, brother. Love it. Wanted to talk about the Saints' disastrous free agency this year, which we all kind of knew they were going to shit the bet on this. You got, they took Tayshon, who's got to have neck surgery, and they said they knew he was going to have neck surgery and he was going to be out. So why would you take this guy? I mean, maybe in the middle of the season he'll be all right, but you know you ain't going to have it for the first couple of games. Nathan Peterson has got a 39 quarterback rating. I've never even heard of a quarterback with a rating that low. Cam Jordan's going to be out with foot surgery. Andrew Pete's gone and Michael Thomas is gone. I mean, the damage that Dennis Allen has done to this team is going to last a decade. <clears throat> yeah, dude. So I think, dude, so I'm glad you called because I never got your input on all that because I had – Talk, talked about all but, like, the Chase Young thing, I think, the last episode. But, yeah, dude, we can start um, with the Nathan Peterman thing. <laughs> I have I, – I, I don't know what it could be other than you don't want anybody to challenge Derek Carr. And I think we all collectively have just come to that conclusion, whether it's right, wrong, or whatever. Motherfucker, that's what we going with because they're not giving us anything else uh, on why they, they went after Nathan Peterman. I mean, there's dudes sitting on the couch – Joe Flacco was one of them that could come in and play better than Nathan Peterman, right? So um, that is a Dennis Allen classic is what that is. If Dennis Allen did the greatest hits, one of the songs would be called what? Nathan Peterman. Well, well, it was classic Dennis Allen, too, is a seven or eight win team, which is what we headed for this year. I mean, this is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it was actually released today. So Vegas has got the Saints at seven and a half. Um, anybody that wants to take the Saints to win eight games next year. I mean, they ain't even gonna go to the playoffs next year, much less win a Super Bowl. So the Chase Bowl. Young, I mean... the Chase Young thing. So essentially, what I got from it is that we paying a guy guaranteed. I think it's like three to five million. No I matter 13 what, mil, thirteen million for his for a one year deal on it. On somebody who's got a neck injury with surgery, are you kidding me? Yeah, but see, I think only he only can get like, all right. So check it out. If the neck thing don't work out, he gets like three to five million. I'm pretty sure it's, it's he. I don't think he, he has to play a little bit to get um some of that money. But I mean, dude, he's only twenty four. You know, bad neck or not, he's twenty four. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, but they, but I mean, the free agency, in my opinion, is to address immediate needs because you don't necessarily address immediate needs in a draft because most of these guys you take don't come off of a college team and immediately start and they're superstar players. I mean, there's only a few that do that. It's like giving, like you send your kid to driving school. And he graduates, and you give him the keys to go on a road trip across the country by himself. You got to have these guys start a little, get acclimated to the NFL, et cetera. And I just, I mean, unless the Saints are looking at a long term plan, which I seriously doubt with this crew we got, they just, I don't, I don't know even know what they're doing. Well, they putting all their their eggs in the Derek Carr basket. I mean, if if that if they ain't showed you. Before, during the season, that they definitely showing you. They definitely all in on Derek Carr, dude. So, like, next year, we either going to be saying nice things about Derek Carr or we're going to be keep, we're gonna continuously say bad things about him. Here's another thing. Derek Carr is so in la-la land. It's just like, man, it's – it's it, and I'm not knocking to do, like, be however you want to be. But you remember when your boy called weeks and weeks ago and he was like, you want to be a preacher? Go ahead. All you yep. see about this dude on social media is he just went to another. I'm not hating on him. I'm just saying, bro, like, don't be mad at the fans when they coming at you because all I see about Derek Carr is him going to speak at another Christian event. 
Well, I, I well I I said a long time ago that he is not the right fit for this organization. He is in La La Land. He's yeah. he, he's and, got and, the he's got the whole like oh well I'm protected regardless. Nothing can happen to me because I believe in God. Motherfucker, we all I mean not all of us but you know a lot of us believe in God. <laughs> so uh, we need you to play good on the field, brother. Yeah, and, pray and for look, that. Let me tell you something. If the Easter Bunny brings me a basket with Derek Carr eggs in it, oh, that's going to be a horrible fucking Easter for me. I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, it's here. All right, dude. All right. Have a good one, Devin. All right, later. All right. Yeah, I mean, Derek Carr is so, like, that's the thing about Derek Carr that's so hard to like. It's like, he just don't care what we think at all. And some people would say, hey, man, that's a good trait to have. <clears throat> but you're the quarterback, bro, the New Orleans Saints. You ain't the quarterback of 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 of, of not the New Orleans Saints. You're the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints coming right after Drew Brees. Make a hype. Get somebody to make a fucking hype video or something. Dude, I don't know. Everything he posts is the same predictable shit. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and judge Derek Carr for his whatever he wants to do. I don't even care. Um, But, yeah, give me a call, 504-265-0025. We're talking about um, the draft tonight. Um, kind of improv, so I'm, you know. But definitely want to talk about the draft. It's looking more and more like Brock Bauer's name is popping up more and more. I'm just saying, like, I've been – Shouting for the Saints to potentially get somebody like Brock Bowers for a long time, dude. And and, and now I'm starting to hit and, and now I'm starting to see in mock drafts he's even going he's even going later than the Saints pick. I've seen him go to the Colts after. I've seen him go as low as twenty. And man, I just would hate for the Saints to pass up on a talent like Brock Bowers, dude. Imagine how much better you'd feel about Derek Carr if the Saints drafted Brock Bowers. But, yeah, uh, so the Saints landed Chase Young. We ain't talked about that since the last time we was on the show. That's a done deal. He's got neck surgery today. So, guess we'll see how the neck goes. Um I see somebody in the comments, Chase is supposed to be ready for the regular season after surgery. So that's the, that's what we'd like. That'd be awesome. Spread quarters. Hey, what's up, Doug? How you doing? Yo, what's happening, man? Man, I agree with you 100% on Brock Bowers, but I actually think if he goes earlier, you know, some people are saying he's going to the Jets or uh, the Chargers. If he's gone by the time we pick, I really like Keon Coleman out of FSU. Yeah, they they looking at him too. You saw that? Yeah, I saw that pop up. Uh, I forget which YouTube channel I watched that keep up with the Saints, but that dude, he tore up LSU first game of the season. Do you remember that? He did. Yes, he did. And I think he's he's the perfect piece to pair with Olave and Shahid and really unlock their game. So you rather him than um, Brian Thomas Jr.? I think if we had different pieces, then I would take Brian Thomas. But with Olavi and Shahid, I think we need a big guy who go up and grab. Not that Thomas can't. I just like Coleman's build better for it. I'm trying. I'm looking at one mock draft right now. And I, I don't even. It's not even showing me Coleman, like in the first round, unless I'm just missing. Really? Well, I I know we got to pick. 45th overall in the second round. I'm about to say, he so might be go, a second round pick. He's got to be. I yeah, I mean, be. if we go OT and then Keon. Oh, I mean, that would be, well, hold that'd on, be hold nice. On, hold on, hold on. So, wait, let's pump the brakes real quick. So, because I know the Saints are missing the pick. Um, I know they're missing the pick. Watch. Let's see. Yeah, they got, the, they got a first. Hold on. I'm going to pull it up right now because I know they're missing one of them. It's either a second or a third. Okay, yeah. They got a first, a second, and they're missing a third and a fourth, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and then we got like three fifth rounders, which I can't believe we didn't send a fifth rounder to Chicago for uh, 
um, Justin Fields, but I think their car didn't want to have no no type of Jameis Winston situation with the fans again. Isn't that so sad? I To me, that's not a competitor, and I don't think that's what the Saints should stand for. But seeing how Gale and Mickey have been running things, I think they're just super content with mediocrity. I mean, something just super comes content. over. Something just comes over me when that's said. When like how you laid that out just now, and that is how I think it is. Like something just comes over me. Like man, that is just that's evil. That is evil. Yeah, I mean that's that's Dennis Allison's guy, and and you know they didn't think it was the right decision to fire him, which I will say. Great X's and O's defensive guy, but I do not trust his in-game management whatsoever when to call a timeout really to be a head coach. I think he might be, if he stayed in the defensive coordinator, could be one of the, the best in the league, you know? Yeah. But for for a head coach, you need more man management. And you saw the grades that came out from the NFL PA. Yeah. He was ranked 29 out of 32. Hey, well, that's why we got Nathan Peterman. You know what I'm saying? Everything just makes sense when you really just think about it. Mm-hmm. All, All right, Devin. Well, I appreciate you. Have a good one. All right, man. You too. Later. Bye. Yeah. Well, <laughs> isn't that, I mean, Neil, in the chat, isn't that sad, dude? I could talk about that the whole show. How sad are we to where we don't even want to bring a quarterback in that's worth the shit because of Derek Carr doesn't like how, cause you know, that's probably how it went. It's like, Oh, you know, I'd rather not deal with what I dealt with last year with Jameis. So if y'all could just do me a favor and get somebody, you know, that just has no chance to, no chance to be in my peripheral of, of, of potentially playing or, like, that defeats the purpose of football to me. Like, brother, you ain't played great enough. First of all, even the greats aren't going to say that, bro. Or they're not going to be cool with that. Shit, if Derek Carr said nothing and they signed Nathan Peterman, he should have been like, hold on, wait up. Bring, bring, bring a competitor in, man. I want to get better. Bring a competitor. Derek Carr, man. Nope. Let's post another church clip. That's all you get from Derek, bro. Church clips and mediocre football. It's just disgusting, dude. It, it really is, man. I, I, I just, the way he laid that out, man, it just made me feel really horrible. We ain't got a practice squad guy. And, you know, some people say, hey, well, Jay Kane will maybe step up. Hopefully. You know, and then next thing you know, Derek Carr is going to hate Jay Kana, who went to Fresno. He'll hate him. You know, I don't know. I just think it's sad. I think it's I think it's what losing franchises do. And I don't even think a losing franchise would want a bad backup. Because they probably ain't got a good starter. So they just they got to make sure they got a, a decent backup. Their starter is not that good. And we kind of in that situation. Um, this show is presented by Rob's AC and Heaton. Um, check it out. They got generators. If you need a generator, hit up Rob, 504-348-7128. Um, get you a generator before hurricane season because you know it's going to get bad. And you're going to be wishing you had a generator. So you could play your Xbox while a fucking natural disaster is going on. <clears throat> I know how people are. I'm the same way. Rob's got you. He's got Honeywell generators. Uh, if you got AC issues, heating issues, uh, any issues where it involves the air conditioning, the heater, or any the electrical, maybe you don't know how to install kitchen lights. You walking in the dark in the kitchen like me, because I ain't even got to see what's in. I just grab that shit. But um, yeah, Rob's got you. Rob's com. Yeah, no, if he does, Derek Carr will run him off. That's that's the type of person we're dealing with, dude. I can only go by what I see. A fifth rounder for Fields would have been a steal. Um, I, I think that's what they gave up for him. 
I think that's what um, the Steelers gave up for Fields. So they got the steal. Uh, yeah, do me a favor. Hit the like button if you're just getting in here so we can get this out there. I was supposed to do it last night, but March Madness has been going on, bro, and I've just been – dude, I watch college basketball for four straight days, and, and I came out – you know what's measurable? I was I was on a heater. I was probably like five and one to start, six and one, something like that. And, um, you know, I came out with nothing. Yeah, boy, measurable. Measurable. I ain't mean to be so negative with car situations. Still got LSU women's basketball, baseball, and Pels to look forward to. Oh, yeah, lots going on with uh, LSU women's basketball. First of all, they in the tournament. They went in. Um, you know, they had a tough start against Middle Tennessee, but they wound up beating the shit out of them. And then um, you got the Kim Mulkey situation. They, they got the, 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 the Washington Post supposed to be releasing an article about Kim Mulkey this week, um, you know. I don't know, bro. I to be honest with you, I don't I don't I don't know what to say. I don't cuz I don't know what they about to release. So I guess we'll maybe talk about that next show. I don't know. Um it is interesting because there's a bunch of coaches in college basketball but they going after Kim Mulkey. Um Kim Mulkey's a uh I would I'd say stubborn, um prideful you know, um, woman. So she came out, did this press on and stuff. I'm going to be honest with you on that. I don't see why she did that. That's the one part I don't really, that's the one part I didn't really understand because it's like, especially somebody as, as notable as Kim Mulkey, it's like you got to know that any attention you give anything, I, I, I have to look at this and I'm I'm like a local dude. I got to look at this. If I reply to something, whatever, you know, it's going to get way more attention than what it probably originally was going to get. Um, and she's got to know that. So I just felt like that part right there, she could have probably not did. Because why are you doing the presser, you know, and all that? I don't know. Maybe they just asked that at the presser. I didn't see the whole thing. I just saw the clip. I'm, I'm not going to say I saw the whole thing. I didn't. I just saw the clip and it seemed like it was on her mind. But maybe they just asked her about it. But it was still on her mind. I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting. Pels got a brutal next few games. Yeah, dude, we talked about the Pels schedule, like, upcoming. We've been kind of talking about it, and, dude, it gets pretty crazy. And then Brandon Ingram's out for a few weeks. But, yeah, this, but here's the cool thing about the Pels schedule is I know a bunch of these games are about to be home once they get off this. Let's say they got, um, yeah, all these games are home. So Pal- Pal's got a brutal next few games, but they all at home. Uh, they play the Thunder at home tomorrow. Uh, they play the Bucks at home. They play the Celtics at home. The Suns at home. The Magic at home. And then the Spurs at home. This is real life. All in the blender. Dude, New Orleans is about to be so popping. On this basketball shit, bro. It's about to... And it sucks that B.I. got hurt because it definitely... It hurts. But um, Zion's... I'm I'm at to use a term I used to use back in the day. Zion's going Duffy. Zion's going duffel bag on these boys. They talking about Zion on every big channel now. They done forgot everything they said about Zion and hamburgers and all this other shit that they be talking about on all the national media and all this shit. They don't they 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 don't forgot about it. They forgot they said it. Now it's Zion dunk countdowns. Now it's hey the Pels. The Pels are probably gonna come out out the West. Zion's gonna average forty. In the playoffs, I saw that one yesterday. Boy, they saying it all now. The choir is singing. The choir is singing right now uh, about Zion. After all this time, um, let me let me hit the chat. My bad. What what are the chances the Pelicans will win fifty games? Um, don't get me wrong. They playing some competition. That's the thing. They playing some competition, but 
Dude, the Pals are rolling. They wh- Who did they slip up against? They slipped up against the Magic. Hey, the Magic are good. And they get to play the Magic again at home. So, coming up. Yeah, they about to play the Thunder, the Bucks, the Celtics, Suns, and Magic. And then they get to finish the the, the homestand with uh, Wembenyaya. Victor Wembenyaya. So, I mean, you're just playing a bunch of talent. Bro, Pals got, yeah. It's a crazy schedule. Uh, like the stream. Thank you, Charlene. Yeah, like the stream. If y'all if y'all don't mind. If y'all just get in here, like the stream. And then you can call me, 504-265-0025, if you got anything to say. Who is the hot babe that drew your picture on the skateboard? Your girlfriend? No. Brother, Michael, you can't. First of all, Michael, the internet, you got men and women on the internet. So people that watch me, it's not always dudes, brother. So she's somebody that watches all being all day, and she is an artist. And she's putting me on a skateboard and sending it to me. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all see a girl uh, do something for older men. Y'all act like, like we, we in prison, that we ain't never seen a woman before. Women follow Holder Maya. Dude, the demographics are straight. We good. I can't, and, and just because she made a skateboard doesn't mean I, 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 my, it's my girlfriend, bro. She just, she drew a skateboard, Michael. Um, As a Wolves fan, I'm worried about the Pels and the Players. Man, dude, what about Anthony Edwards? I know this happened after, since the last show. Anthony Edwards putting that dude on a poster. Collins, that was one of the most vicious, most Space Jam-looking fucking dunks I've ever seen in my life. Holy shit. That was crazy. Um, The two teams I'm scared to play in the West are Denver and the Mavs. I agree on both of them. And the Mavs are hot. I mean, Kyrie's doing alleys and just a bunch of shit. Dude, the Mavs are fun to watch. Um, Denver, of course, nobody wants to play Jokic. I, I always say this: nobody, nobody, nobody wakes up and says, "Yo, I, I want my my basketball team to play Jokic." You know that's gonna, you know that's gonna suck. Sprite quarters. Yeah, I'm live. Yeah, what's happening? I don't know who the fuck was, was on the fucking mermaid float yesterday, coming down veteran. But I got hit in the head with a fucking potato, and then I got smoked in the fucking nuts with a fucking lemon. And I'm really fucking pissed. So whoever's on the mermaid float, coming down vet yesterday, if you want to catch these hands, I'll have it. You don't throw a lemon at somebody's nuts. That's terrible. And I hope you feel better, brother. Whew. That's the off season, though. You know what I'm saying? We ain't always got to talk about Derek Carr and all that. Sometimes you just got to talk about life. You know, you're hitting the nuts with a lemon. You got to tell somebody about that. You got to talk about that. And I don't disagree with his method of coming on the show to say, hey, whoever did that, fuck you. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, when's the Respect Your Body beer going to be in the tap room? That's going to be in April. It's going to be in the beginning of April or the middle of April, something like that. But it's definitely in April. In fact, you know, to be honest with you, bro, April is just Respect Your Body Month. Uh, let's just call it Respect Your Body Month because the beer is coming out. Um, I, I'm dropping the Respect Your Body Summer Line. That's about to happen uh, in April. So we're going to have 
uh, Respect Your Body, new logos and shorts and shirts and shit like that. Um, and the beer. Yeah, no, dude. April Big Respect Your Body Month. For sure. Remember, first step to respecting your body, you got to disrespect it first. You can't just, you know, can't just respect it and you never be able to respect it if you know what I'm saying. If it wasn't disrespected. Um... That was an old school phone. <laughs> you slam shut. Um, my phone is old school. My phone is, and I'm sure his is too. Chris Graham, come judge a crawfish bowl on 420. Chris, dude, appreciate you coming here and to where I can tell you, brother, because maybe because a lot of people send me that shit and, I, and they don't hear back from me. I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I don't judge. I don't. I don't do that. And not respectfully, I just don't do it. Um, I'm not into that. I'm not into judging food and all that shit. And um, I and but the good news is is I've never. This is not something where like, where hey, you couldn't get me to come do the crawfish judge the crawfish bowl. I've never went to any of them. I've never done one. Um, that's just not what I'm into. So like, if I go eat crawfish, you know, I go eat crawfish. You know what I'm saying? I go eat crawfish. All that putting me, I, I'm not, I'm just, I don't do good with that, bro. Like, the whole, like, putting me as a judge thing, uh-uh. I ain't the one. I just like having a good time. So, I don't do any, so I guess it's a good time to mention, again, Um, I don't I do not do any cook-offs. I don't do judging that cook-offs. So I know I know a bunch of TikTokers and stuff do. I, I, ain't, I ain't the one. I ain't gonna be that brother. But much love and I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Had to shoot you gotta shoot your shot. I believe in that. I just ain't into it. That's all it is. Yeah, hey, the beer, it's it's only at the brewery to start. So you're gonna have to and they're gonna take pre orders online. So that's that's the key thing with that. They're gonna take pre orders online, uh, for the respect your body light. So you'll be able to pre order it online, you can go pick it up. But that's what I, that's how it's got to start. So and then we're gonna try to get it into like um, not try. I mean they waiting a bunch of bars and shit are waiting. So we just gotta line it all up. Like I know Blue Oak wants to get it. Um, Blue Oak Barbecue they want to get it. Uh, Avenue Pub they want to get it. You know there's a bunch of places that would probably have it on tap and shit like that. And we just gotta figure all that shit out. So um anyway. Dude, I turned on Monday Night Raw tonight, dude. I just can't, dude. I, and I, and you know what? Thing about me is I'm insane. So, like, I keep turning it on every Monday, hoping, bro, it will give me something, bro. But here's the thing about it. You know how you know when you need to part, part ways with something? You'll just keep getting signs. Every time I turn on Raw, man, it gives me a reason right away to turn it on. Like, right away. I turned on at night. I wanted to turn on around 7.05 so I could be there for the intro. The Rock was going to be in the ring. The Rock, you know, WWE legend, The Rock, he was going to be in the ring. I turned on this shit, bro. Everybody in the, in the crowd is saying, holy shit, and they bleeping it out. And I'm talking about, like, 50 times. Like, this is right when I turned. They bleeping out the fans saying, holy shit, okay? And it sounds like a CD skipping. You literally, you, you, it is the, it is the most lamest, most annoying thing. And then in the, in the meanwhile, the wrestlers can curse. So the rock will curse. WWE has, has made itself the most contradictive just from being people pleasers. Cause that's what WWE turned into a bunch of people pleasers. And from being that way, they have turned into just this giant contradiction it's just this giant contradiction. It's like, brother, you got 15,000 people saying, holy shit, let it go. Let it go. Dude, the rock's in the ring. You getting what you wanted. The fans are reacting. Dude, they cannot do anything right, bro. And, and this is somebody I've watched wrestling since 96. 
I'm okay with not showing tits and saying the F word and all this other shit on Raw that used to happen. I'm, I'm okay with that not happening. But, bro, make it this, like make it one way and, and keep it that way. I've Somebody commented on my Twitter and said, oh, well, they've been doing that since 2006. Brother, no, they haven't. No, they haven't, because I've heard the fans say, holy shit. So I just, I'm so confused. Uh, what ha- what comes on right after all? Some stupid show where they, they letting them say the F-bomb on the same network that Raw's on, USA. The same network. They letting them say the F-bomb on this TV show. Bunch of cowboy lawyers or something. I don't even know what the fucking show's called. Bunch of cowboy lawyers, and they get to cuss the whole show. But we bleeping out the wrestling fans. It's just... I don't get it, dude. Are we checking the signs that they bring it in? If the sign says stupid on it, they can't bring it in? Because we a bunch of wussies? Uh, It's just disgusting, man. The rock's in the ring, and you're bleeping out, holy shit. How legendary. And then they got these weirdos on Twitter who are new wrestling fans, like within the last 10 years, they're a bunch of weirdos, and they like, oh, yeah, uh, good, because I don't want to hear it anyway. All right, dude. (laughs) Y'all are some weirdos, man. You got any Abita decals for sale? I want to put some on my lunchbox. I got got Abita decals, not for sale. No, I I don't sell stickers, bro. But I put them in all the merch bags and shit. But if you need one, yeah, I can get you that. For free. Neil, cool. Coming down for Jazz, we'll pre-order some. Yeah, there you go, Neil. That's the best way to do it. If you're coming down, just pre-order it and pick it up on your way in. Yeah, dude. These dudes done turn wrestling into where the, the people who are legacy watchers, the people who were there for the best time of wrestling and stayed there. Through all this transition of bullshit, we stayed there. We still turn it on every Monday night. We still watch Mania. We still watch the pay-per-views, even though it's brutal. I mean, it's terrible. I'll tell this story till I die, bro. I was on, I was at a bachelor party probably two years ago or a year ago, and we all took shrooms. And uh we were uh we were at the we were, you know, at a pool. We had a beach house. We all like 20 of us rented a beach house. And we all took shrooms, but we were tripping face. And um, it was the the night of WrestleMania, and I, dude, I'm I'm around twenty dudes that just don't like wrestling. You know what I'm saying? You, you you can't pay them to watch it. And I just hyped all these dudes up. They were on shrooms. I hyped them all up. That hey, WrestleMania is coming on. You know, we gotta watch this shit. So, dude, they in. You know, it's hard to get. You can get one or two people to maybe you know, change their views or, or be open or something. To get 20, that's tough, bro. 20 dudes, that's tough. Got them all to sit down to watch WrestleMania, bro. Dude. <laughs> First of all, it was two boring-ass matches. Like, like I'm t- I don't know how much more boring it could have got. Um, and, dude, within two matches, they were like, bro, this is absolutely unwatchable. They're like, bro, this is unwatchable. We can't watch it. And I was like, brother, I'm so sorry, man. I thought it was WrestleMania. You know, I thought it, we were about to watch a show. You know, you just watching some dumb shit. <laughs> Sad, bro. Sad money grab in a way. Uh, wasting the wide receiver in the first round when we don't have a QB to throw it to him. Yeah, I know, but who you want to, I mean, you want to draft, a, they taking four quarterbacks probably in the first 10 picks, so, I mean, it'd be tough. If I can get a quarterback that, like, one of them four, yeah, I'm sure we should do it. But then again, Derek Carr's not going to want to. Derek, it's all about Derek. Derek don't, he don't want no competition. He wants to back up to be a bum. And, a, and not just a bum, he wants them to be a real bad bum to where there ain't no chance. Because Derek likes to leave games. When we losing, he likes to leave the he likes to roll out. So um 
and then he'll come back whenever he's good, or, you know, maybe in a few plays. So he wants that quarterback to be to be horrible. Uh, it feels like Major League tanking this season to let Jameis and replace him with Peterman. and there you go. You're right. That's what we started the show with, and it, it's sad. It really is. It's sad when when you get down to the truth of what's happening. It's sad. Ain't no winning franchise does that. Even winning franchises, if 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 they got a great quarterback, they they got somebody to back them up. That's not Nathan Peterman. Sable was the goat. Uh, I usually just watch only the pay per views. I try to watch Raw just because, especially like right now when you ain't got no football on or nothing like that. It's like, yeah, I definitely try to tune in to Raw and it's unwatchable. <laughs> the promos are so horrible. Horrible, man. And, and and most people would be like, Devin, and why you keep watching? Because I'm a real wrestling fan, bro. This, this shit really impacted me. My majority of my life. So I don't want to give up on these people, but they just... So this is coming. This is criticism of of passion. It's it's unwatchable. It's unwatch. Turn it on. Watch it for thirty minutes and then call me next show or whatever, and you let me know. You let me know. Uh yeah, Vikings rumors they trade eleven twenty third pick for Pagers. Well, I think they're gonna try to get J J McCarthy. That's who they trying to get. The Vikings, they trying to get J- they, and JJ McCarthy. He looked like a Viking. That motherfucker looked like a Viking. So that makes sense. Blonde head dude, JJ McCarthy looked like a Viking. They definitely like if 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 a team's gonna trade up, they definitely want them. The Saints may fuck around and trade down. The Saints could trade down. Because, I mean, you ain't got a third or a fourth round pick. You know, we need, we need, we need, we need that. How can we not have a third? I mean, we need, we didn't, who we got in free agency? Chase Young with the neck. Um, That's what I call, and that's no disrespect. Just, that's what I got to call him until I see him on the field. It's Chase Young with the neck. Um, And then they landed who? Cedric Wilson from Miami. Okay. All right. The charge is fixing to be on the come up for sure. Well, yeah, because they, they got a great coach. And that's that's really it on that. That's what happens when you got a great coach. You get rid of all your good players. Keenan Allen, see you later. Mike Williams, all of them. Because when you got a great coach, you're going to get production out of somebody else. Don Cardinal. We need a fucking miracle. Derek fucking Carr is our quarterback. To be honest with you, brother, I think they should put that on a billboard. When you get to the city. Until the end of the season. Or till the start of it. Whatever. We need a fucking miracle. Derek fucking Carr is our quarterback. And that translates to life too. You know what I'm saying? So I like I like that one. That's a good one. Um, I hope the tight end from Georgia. Tired of picking offensive linemen that don't pan out. I'm look, bro. I'm on the Brock Bowers wagon, dude. And I need to see the Saints pass up on him to believe it. Even though the Saints are are are, are all pro at passing up on the motherfucker I want. I can't, I can't, I want to see them pass up on Brock Bowers, bro. I'm literally probably going to punch a hole in the wall. I'm, I'm, I'm dead ass. I'm going to punch a hole. I got a hole in the wall right over there from the, it's probably about three years ago. It's just something got me so pissed off. You know, white dudes will punch a hole in the wall. If the Saints pass up on Brock Bowers, I'm, I'm punching, I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting a brother hole on the wall right next to the hole I already got. They're going to have two holes on the wall if the Saints pass up on Brock Bowers. I'm not going to stand for that. 
and it better be somebody good if they do. I'm tired of it, dude. I mean, the names are just like circling my head, all the guys they passed up on. I'm not going to do it, bro. It's it, This team needs an electric pick. Y- you see what I'm saying? What sparked the Saints in 06 after the hurricane? Drafting Reggie Bush. We didn't know how good Drew was going to be. We didn't even know who Sean Payton was. We just knew we hired some dude named Sean Payton. Which, let me stop right there and say that nothing about this story correlates to our current situation other than we just need an electric pick. Ain't no Sean Payton, Dennis Allen, Cor- nothing. We just need an electric pick. That's all I'm looking for, an electric pick. It's got to be electric. If it ain't electric... I mean, dude, if it's an offensive lineman, when they, cause, cause you know what they do. If if it's an offensive lineman, fine, no problem. When they show the highlight tape after you draft them, when they show the highlight tape, that motherfucker better be rolling people over, dude. He better be rolling people over, bro. Not. Oh, he's. Here's, here's the offensive lineman you just drafted. He's uh, doing a leg exercise. And also, by the way, he's got some injury concerns Why he's doing the leg exercises. That's the type of dudes the Saints will draft. They immediately tell you about the injury history. And shout out to Brian Brzee, because I'll be the first to tell you, they did it with him. It had me, you know, first right when they showed the highlight tape. Brian Brzee in the knee brace. So I was skeptical. Um, but shout out to Brian Brzee. He's a pretty damn good football player. But uh, no, we need an electric pick. Seriously, we need an electric pick. When an abrasive coach has always hated Bob Knight, was a villain for most of his career and let his, and let his players love him. Well, Bob Knight also was beating the shit out of it. Not, I don't want to exaggerate but he was you know he was putting hands but back then bro i'm telling you bro that's just how it was i mean when i played football as a little kid you know they used to take both our heads and you know (laughs) shit was crazy dude um not eliminate the dude's nuts still has me dead yeah that dude's crazy bro that dude's got problems Seriously, that that Deuce McAllister era was fun though. Yeah, of course. Super memorable. Um, I remember all them games, to be honest with you. I remember all the times Aaron Brooks threw the ball behind his head and laughed. Also, happy birthday, Aaron Brooks, Saints legend. Um, First Saint to win a playoff game. Don't forget it. Because remember, I mean, we had signed Jeff Blake that year, and that was a big free agency pickup. At the time for the Saints, I mean, we had come from quarterback poverty. We had motherfucker. If you were drunk and could throw a football, the Saints had you. The Saints had you behind center on Sundays in the late nineties. Kerry Collins was drunk as shit, playing quarterback for the Saints. Danny Werfel was fucking. His helmet was sideways, and then you know all the Tollivers and the you know the eight Billy Joe and. Uh, 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 I mean, we had so many fucking quarterbacks, dude. Then we finally got Jeff Blake from Cincinnati and we were hype and he broke his leg like 11 games in, in comes Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks goes on to win the Saints first playoff game. Hakeem drops the ball. I was in the Superdome. I'll never forget it. I had Bia getting thrown on my head. Uh, this is back when they had the Macy's and shit right by the Super. I remember all this shit, dude. We were in the nosebleeds, me and my dad. I'll never forget that shit. And the Rams were a team, I mean, dude, like Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, uh, uh, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, uh, Ricky Pro, Ernie Conwell, who wound up being a saint. 
every time somebody brings up Aaron Brooks, we did like people from New Orleans, we always or Saints fans, we always said, Yeah, that's Vic's cousin because it made us feel better about Aaron Brooks. Because seriously, like we never had a superstar. You know what I'm saying? We never really had a superstar. And Michael Vick was such a superstar that even Saints fans admired Michael Vick. That's how big of a superstar he was. So whenever we could, because you know how people from Louisiana are, whenever we can gain a leverage, we'll use it. Our quarterback, New Orleans Saints, Aaron Brooks, that's Michael Vick's cousin. That's how we, that's, that's how we are. That's how we are, man. Yeah, that's Mike Vick's cousin, bro. He, he's dude. Wait till you see him run. He could barely run. He ran all right. Yeah, they grew up in Virginia together. Amy, since you don't answer your message, am I gonna get Rob staying in a hotel near Streetcar Cafe? No. It's by the street. It's right by the streetcar in the middle of downtown. I doubt it. I mean, don't go down them alleyways right there. Bunch of weirdos on crack and shit. And they got the monks probably nearby. They're going to try to sell you a bracelet for $300. I'm still a huge Ricky Williams fan. I mean, I'm a huge Ricky Williams fan, too. His stint in New Orleans was not impressive. Spread quarters. Sound like what's up, Dan? How are we doing tonight? What's up? What's up? What's up? Who's the best number 16 on the Saints? Just your opinion. The best ever. Of, ever? Ever. Yeah. Should be easy, right? Um, I mean, probably Lance Moore. Lance Romance. Yep. Who's the man? I done running two miles. Talk about hell. Well, what the you don't fuck's agree? Wrong, what the fuck's wrong with you? Training, man. A mile a day. Oh, for the Crescent City Classic? Saturday. Got a big event Saturday, Crescent City Classic. Yeah. No, yeah, no, sweat your nuts off, man. What, what, so what, that, that's what you were calling? You just wanted to ask me what the... um the No, I really, I really want to know what's, like, the best way to recover after running. Go go, go lay down. Drink water. Water? Yeah. Don't. All right. I got to go. Why don't you get done running and then call me? You don't, you're calling me mid-run. Who does that? And you just asked me this random number 16 question. How you... That was wild. But all right. All right. Um. Hey, check it out. I know I've been promoting the Barry High uh, by Ounce of Hope. Yo, they just came out with a peach buzz. They just came out with a peach buzz. Ounceofhope.com, peach buzz. Respect your body. Spread quarters. Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, check it out. You got to turn down the stream. How you feel about the Pels? The Pels versus OKC? Um, I... You know, I kind of talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You know, I, I I hate playing the Thunder, but you know, yeah, but we hot. I know we hot. No, no, you right. I'm, I mean, we're gonna have to play the good teams anyway, right? But man, that that team right there. But at least we got them in the blender. That's gonna help. Um, even though I went to go see OKC versus the Pels earlier this year, Zion was out, so that you no, know, that don't count, right? But Zion. Now we got Bi. Yeah, now Bi's out. You see how they do it to you. Exactly, man. They give you hope, so. So, I mean, give you hope, so. it's a hype extended need out, right? So, it's only going to be like, what? He'll be out like three weeks, probably. Yeah, that's what I was feeling. You know, what about Dyson Daniels? When's he coming back? Um, He's been out a minute, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, my thing is with the guards, like, I love Dyson, but my thing is with the guards, like, man. I think we do good going with who's hot, and whenever somebody comes back like that, it's like sometimes it takes them a while to get to get back going. So that's on my only thing with that. Same thing with Bi though, you know that's going to be an issue. 
like when he gets back because you know the Pels were the Pels are rolling like like they in rhythm they're not losing games um that they should win you know what I'm saying like they just in a good rhythm right and when I dude... like I'd like for them I'd like for them to take the time and get healthy but if it takes all the parts of the team to be healthy to win and get hot you know it makes me worry I'm not gonna lie it makes me worry about OKC I did, we need to pull through while B.I. out just long enough so B.I. come back in we start killing shit again well, because I mean, you're gonna get tested. I mean, you 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 gotta play the Thunder, then you go play the Bucks at home. You that's all at home. You play the Celtics. I mean, you're getting so tested. The Suns, the Magic again. I mean, the Magic. We don't match up well against them. Um, yeah. I want AZ. That's what I want. I want AZ. I'm fine with it. They can't play D. I want AZ, but the Bucks and the the Thunder. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, I'm a holler at you. I right, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, the the Suns don't scare me at all. Yeah, they they cannot play defense. I mean, I've watched several of their games. They 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 can't play defense. Um, anyway, yeah, Magic. All them games at home. So all them games I just said, they all at home. I mean, then you cap it off with the Spurs at home. Who's on RYB next? Who is on all? Oh, well, Whistle Monster. I'm, that should be coming out this week. I got to finish editing it. What's today's date? The 25th. Yeah, that'll be out this week. Yeah, that'll be out this week. Hey, do me a favor. Like the stream. Um, And if you like THC seltzers, check out them berry highs and them peach buzzes from Ounce of Hope. Bro, I'm going to tell you, that peach buzz right there tastes a little more weed in it. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say that on YouTube. We, nah, I don't know. I've, I've said it before. That's for damn sure. Um, Gotta convince Poo Poo Busaw to come on and revive. No, I want Lil Doogie. If we talking about characters, I want Lil Doogie. Or when, when Popeye from the West Bank gets out in 2030, I'm going to have him on. So... Diddy used to be puffy and shit ain't been... Yeah, the Diddy shit's crazy. They raiding Diddy's house and Diddy's on an island. It's like an episode of South Park, dude. It's crazy. Like, you you had to think that Diddy knew that they were coming and he went on an island. I don't know. Can't we check the, the, the air traffic? See if he... When he flew out? I mean... He had to have known. Uh, you gonna watch the new Beetlejuice movie? I love the original Beetlejuice movie. Shake, 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 Shinora. Yeah, like I love it. Who who all was in the the original? Michael Keaton. Um, who was the chick? Super famous. Come on, somebody's gonna know the original Beetlejuice. The chick, the main character. What's her name? Super famous. Come on, man. I got I to see this. Oh, I could just look it up. I figure somebody would have known that. Winona Ryder. I'm a big Winona Ryder fan. I know I couldn't remember her name just now. That Don't let that fool you. I'm a, no, seriously, I'm a huge Winona Ryder fan, dude. Huge Winona fan, bro. And she's hot, bro. I love Winona, man. She blows Joes, too. She smokes Joes. Yeah. Listen to the movies Winona Ryder was in. Beetlejuice, Edward Hands. Obviously, we know about Stranger Things. Girl Interrupted. Classic. Um, what else? Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds. She fucked Deeds over. Y'all remember that? Yeah, she was in on it. But then she really fell for him. And the big lady that Deedee, that Deeds worked with or whatever, she hated. She hated Winona. She wanted to fight her. 
because she thought that she was, you know, what she was right. Um, the woman from Home Alone. Thoughts on new Metro Future album. I haven't listened to it yet, but I know it's out, and it just happened the last few days. So I'm not that late. I just ain't got to it yet, and I love Future. Um, am I from Shaman? Yes. Uh, anyway. Black Swan. Black Swan, Winona Ryder. I know y'all remember that one. Uh, what's another good one from Winona? That's, I mean, that's really the main ones. Yeah, that's the main ones. Damn, she was in, she appeared in a lot. She was in Zoolander. That's crazy, man. She was, oh, wait, she's in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, coming out in 2024. September 6th, 2024. Oh, this is what you're talking about? Okay. Michael, this must be what you're talking about. It's called Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And they bring in Winona back. You see what I'm saying? They bring in Michael Keaton back, it looks like. And William Defoe's in that motherfucker. So you know it's a, you know it's serious. William Defoe, Green Goblin, in the movie? You better get your popcorn ready. You better get your popcorn ready if fucking Green Goblin is in a Beetlejuice movie. You know that that's about to be something. Wow. Yeah, was she in Wild Things? I don't know. Oh, I, I fuck with Joanna Lucas, too. Yeah, Metro definitely top three producers. All, no doubt. No doubt. Jenna Ortega. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at I didn't know. I didn't know they were doing that. So it's basically a... It's a... Okay. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's a sequel. Okay. I like that, man. William Dafoe, huh? I mean, name a bad movie William Dafoe was in. I ain't seen them all, but every time I see him on the screen, that motherfucker in a serious role. Um, Hey, shout out to Blue Plate Mayo, the official mayo of Hold the Mayo. Um, If you're buying mayo, you're in the grocery store. Support local mayo and don't buy tourist mayo. It's it's real simple. Uh, don't buy tourist mayo. Support local mayo. Grab blue plate. Leave the rest in the uh, in the aisle. You you don't need it. They they blue plate. Spread quarters. Hey, uh, I just want to get back to a little bit of the pals real quick. Yeah, my bad. I, mean, I, I like Bill. I was on a Winona Ryder kick there. My bad, dude. Nah, you good. You good. What? So, have you heard the word on Bi? Have you heard the word? Nah, what's the word? Herb the word, baby. Herb the word. Okay, I like that. I like that. I think. I think. What, what you? Go ahead. We starting to ride if you don't get first team. Oh, he's getting first team, bro. That that there's zero chance that don't happen this year. Cause I mean, dude, he's even leveled up again. So there's no way, right? There's just no way. Yeah, no, I'd be pissed off. I mean, ain't nothing. That that's who I like. I like Herb. I think Herb holds the team together. Yesterday I saw a tweet when they said uh Herb was the the best team or no, they said Herb Without Herb Jones, this team wouldn't be remotely as good as we are. I don't think that's true. But I think Herb right now, he's holding the team together at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a luxury to have an A-plus defender like that. Um, it's just a luxury. You know, not every team has that. And we have the best, in my opinion. I don't think there's a better defender than Herb Jones. So we have the best we got him on a good contract. I got to say that. We got him on a good contract. So whenever I see, like, hypothetical trades, like I even saw one the other day, like, hey, whenever the season's over, the Pelicans should revisit that Deontay Murray trade. And I'm like, and they had Herb in there. I'm like, dude, see you later. Like, no chance. Yeah. No chance. See you later, dude. Like, Deontay Murray is not, like, a dude that, like, I'd go get a post of and put him on my wall, bro. Like, he's not that. He ain't that. He ain't him. 
like that. Sorry. Uh, Herb is just as him, if not more him. Herb, Herb Jones saved my life. Real shit. Herb really? Jones saved my life. Yeah, so. And. I, especially in the playoffs. Think about the playoffs, bro. Like, whenever you play, like, dudes who've been playing in the playoffs forever that a season, you know, the Durants, uh, LeBron, whatever. Dude, if you got Herb Jones, bro, you, you, you it, it's the best luxury. You know what? I I love Herb Jones. I haven't heard him. Like, I see some of his interviews and stuff like that. I like, I love Larry Nance. I love your Larry, Larry Nance interview. I would love to see you interview Herb Jones. That's something I'd love to watch. Oh, I'd glad, I'd love to. Um, he seems like more of a down to earth dude than a lot of athletes. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. So he likes to fish and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if anything, I'd just. I'd like to get him on a boat with Captain Charlie, my cousin. And I'm telling you, we, mm-hmm. we'd fish until our hands fell off. That'd be awesome, man. You make a whole you make a whole video out of that. That would be crazy. Yeah. We're gonna make that happen one day, bro. Trust me, you just gotta speak it into existence. All right. Just wanna shout out, man. You're doing great. Love the video. Keep it coming, bro. Go All Grizzlies. Right. Uh, don't listen to this motherfucker. All right, don't listen to this motherfucker. Later. Ah oh, man. Was true, HBO True Detective filmed in the parish? Some of it was. Yes. Some of it was. I don't know if all, I think just some of it. A lot of shit gets filmed in the parish. Down the road? The thing about the parish is when you start heading down the road, uh, on St. Bernard Highway, they got that them trees, them oak trees with the moss and stuff, and it's like infamous. It's infamous, dude. Now, you'll never see anything really like it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right by the cow pastures and shit. So they love that scene. And then they love just going down the road because there's a lot of space. Um, like going towards like Shell Beach and shit like that. There's just a lot of space and they could do whatever they want, you know? Um, Hey, yo, this show I, I, I put on Apple and Spotify, so I'll have it up by tomorrow morning. So if you have it in your vehicle and you want to listen to the shows on Apple or Spotify, they're on there. Uh, Respect Your Body Podcast which has 10 episodes out right now, released. All of them are on Apple and Spotify. If you ever want to check them out, they're also on YouTube. If you want to visually, if you want to see the interview in person, because everybody I get on Respect Your Body Podcast, I don't do Zoom or nothing like that. I do, you got to come to my house. You got to walk past my dirty ass dishes and shit like that. I want you to feel very human talking to me, not on a Zoom. So if you ever want to watch them, they on YouTube. It's in a playlist on the RYB podcast. Um, and then I got them on Apple and Spotify too. Uh, Respect Your Body merch dropping in April. That'll be on htmsports.com. That's my the only place you can get my merchandise. Now, you might go find some knockoffs in China, but it's not my shit. And it's not the same quality or material and none of that. So... Whatever you want to do, but my site is hcmsports.com. It's the only place you can get my merch from me. Uh, and it's the real merch. It's not the knockoff Chinese stuff. And the only reason that happens is because when you sell a lot of merch, they start making sites, knockoff sites. And it's terrible. And I'm from the parish, so I don't, I'm don't. i not going to go call these people in China. You know? Fuck them. What is the place going towards... Charles with the trees crossing the road, creating like that's that that's what I'm telling you about. I don't know. You're talking about going towards Charlie's, yeah. That's why I was just that's why I was telling you about. That's the that's the infamous scene that they love to film. It's right by the cow pastures. Um. Anyway, hey, do me a favor before we get out of here. Like the stream. You might have to drop the chat down, X the chat down. Hit the thumbs up. That really uh, helps me out a lot on YouTube. And then also, we'll, I'll be back uh, doing the show on Sunday, usually around 7, 8 o'clock. I always schedule it to where it'll show it, like hours before, so you'll know exactly what time. You just got to check my YouTube. That's it. Um, and the phone line's always open. So if, even if after the show you want to leave a voicemail or whatever, you can call the number, leave a voicemail. Um, and if I can remember, I'll play it on on the show next week. But anyway, all right, I'm out of here. Y'all take care, and uh, 
you know, y'all have a fantastic week. Appreciate it.